Today I've got a problem from the Oxford University Mathematics Admissions Test. This is from 2002. It's a cubic equation. I really like doing cubic equations, especially with my students, because it's kind of out of the comfort zone when you're initially preparing for the MAT, but it's something you've got to be super familiar with when you get round to it. So we want to know the number of solutions of the equation x cubed plus x squared minus x minus 2 equals 0, where x is positive. Uh, is it 1, 2, 3, or is it dependent on the value of a? A really cool problem because there's a, mo a lot of different ways you can approach this. Pause the video now and give it a go for yourself. Now, one way you could approach this is just by trying a value or several values of a. Um, you know, if you plug in a is 7, let's say, and you manage to show that x cubed plus 7x squared minus x minus 2 equals 0 has three solutions, then you know, for example, the answer couldn't be a or b. And, you know, you could try a different value of a, you know, it might be sensible to try a equals zero here. But I'm actually just going to kind of solve this directly. Um, and if you followed the channel in <laughs> in the last month or so, uh, you will have seen me solve lots of problem problems like this. So we've got a cubic and we're not interested in the solutions. We're interested in the number of solutions. And whenever we see that, that is code to draw a picture, draw a graph of some sort. Now here it's kind of difficult because we've got this a term here, which could be any number, positive, negative, zero, whatever. So maybe we can kind of just draw it without. So what if we just move this guy to the other side and we have x cubed plus, also oh, minus x minus 2 equals uh, ax squared or minus ax squared even. And what we're trying to do is work out, well, does this equation have solutions where x is positive or how many solutions sorry does it have when x is positive and now you might think okay cool great i'm gonna sketch this guy sketch this guy and just look at the points of intersection now that would be great except this thing here is a little bit fiddly to draw um you can kind of well with a bit of trial and error you can see that there's no nice roots of this equation um so you can try one you can try minus one neither of those kind of work as nice roots here nor does two or minus kind of weird, weird irrational numbers. So what I'm going to do is also take the 2 over to the other side. So I get x cubed minus x equals 2 minus ax squared. Now this is really nice to sketch because I can take out a factor of x and in fact then it will become a quadratic and it'll be easy to sketch. So this thing here on the left hand side it's easy to see that this is x, x minus 1, x plus 1 and then I've got that equals 2 minus ax squared. So let me sketch the left-hand side. So y equals x, x minus 1, x plus 1. Pretty standard graph to draw, something along those lines there. Let me change my pen color now. So now I've got 2 minus ax squared. Doesn't matter what a is, the y-intercept will always be 2, which is maybe there. And the idea is this is a parabola, provided a is non-zero. If a is 0, well, if a is 0, it's pretty clear we get one solution here. I mean, maybe two is down here and you could say, well, maybe there's three solutions, but actually we don't care about any of the ones where X is negative. We're only interested in the solutions where X is positive. So there's clearly only going to be one positive solution. So immediately we can get rid of B and C. Now, what if we vary A? So this is going to be a parabola. So it could look like this, could look like this, could look like this, could look really, really skinny like this. Hmm. Well, in the first two cases I drew here, we can see there's only one positive intersection because once you intersect down here, the red graphs go down, the blue graphs go up. There's not going to be any more. So that doesn't really give me anything new. That still suggests that there's only one solution. Uh, here in this red graph I've drawn here, you can kind of see there'll be a point of intersection there. And then the cubic will kind of go up that way and uh, the x squared graph will keep going on its way there. Um, and well, what about over here? What if you have a makes the parabola really, really skinny? So if a is um, a very, very big negative number, so like minus a million or something, it would look something like this. Well, the idea is it actually doesn't matter because you'd still uh, get an intersection point. It would just be probably far off the screen here. Because remember, this is only ever a quadratic. It doesn't matter what a is. This is only ever a quadratic. But this blue graph here is a cubic. And so we can choose, um, you know, sufficiently large x. So eventually this blue graph will have to be above the red graph. Let me maybe make this slightly more algebraic, maybe more algebraic than it needs to be. Let's call the blue graph the cubic f of x and this guy here g of x. The idea is, well, f of 0, in fact, let me call h of x. Let's make it super, super formal. 
h of x is going to be f of x minus g of x. And the idea is, well, what's h of 0? Well, h of 0 is f of 0 minus g of 0. Uh, f of 0 is 0, g of 0 is 2. So f of 0, uh, h of 0, sorry, is negative 2. Now, what is h of, like, let's say, a, th a thousand or a very big number? Well, that's going to be f of 10, 100,000, which is a very big number because it's a cubic. It's 100,000 to the power of 3 minus 100,000. It's still going to be a very, very, very big number. And what about g of 100,000? Well, it's still going to be a big number, but it's not going to be quite as big because it's only got 100,000 squared in it, whereas this guy here will have 100,000 cubed in it. Obviously, this is all dependent on the value of a. If I made a like a trillion, I would maybe have to use x's even bigger to make this argument. But the idea here is h of 100,000 or whatever is going to be positive. And now we can use the intermediate value theorem, or I can't remember what they teach it to you in, in A-level. It's like change of sign or something like that. Uh, but the idea here is h is a continuous function. It's negative here at 0, negative, positive when x is a very large number. And so therefore, at some point in between, they must intersect. Um, and so there will be a solution here. And now you may think, well, what is what if there's like, is there a chance to have two solutions? Well, the answer is kind of no. Um, and the reason being because kind of once the cubic surpasses, so like you can see that if there is a point of intersection, it's got to be past the point two. And by this point, the cubic is already kind of increasing at a greater rate than the um, quadratic graph is. And so by the time they intersect, um, the cubic graph will be growing much more quickly. And so when they do intersect, it will look something like this. This will be f of x and g of x will be growing quite slowly uh, in, in comparison. Um, obviously, you can make that slightly more mathematically rigorous, and I encourage you to do so. Um, but that's the idea here. So the correct answer here is 1. No matter what a is, uh, there'll only ever be one positive point of intersection or one point of intersection where x is bigger than 0. Thanks so much for watching. If you are someone who's looking to prepare for the MAT, the TMUA, and whatnot, I'm actually soon about to close my uh, uh, admissions process to taking on new students because I'm slowly filling up because loads of you guys have gone in contact. So if you are looking to apply in the next uh, few months, or I guess in October, uh, looking to sit the MAT or TMUA, please do get in touch if it's something that you are looking for more support with. Uh, it's definitely something where you do need to prepare, whether you have external support or not. Um, and so if you're looking for some additional support alongside the stuff you're already doing to prepare, please do reach out. Link in the description. Thanks so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Have a great day.